So what's your, uh, you think they're going to get rid of uh, traditional HPS and make everyone go LED? I think they already did. I know, but do you think that's going to really hold up? And, they, you know, I mean, I guess it'll be, what's your opinion on it? Uh, one, I think it's a great thing. I mean, you're using LED too, though, right? Yeah, so we're using the fluence. I mean, it's hard not to use LED just because of the cost, you know, of running anything else. Yeah, if you're doing anything at scale, the cost of power, but also, I think people that haven't made the switch, they're just a little stuck in their ways. Sure. Um, because the technology has caught up, and you're clearly able to get quality. I mean, I mean, I'm already. You're not hitting... even using adjustable spectrum. Now with no. the adjustable spectrum, you can mimic HPS light. You can, I mean, to a degree, it'll mim mimic the spectrum, right? You can set to, it to something almost. To a degree, but yeah. I think spectrum change, we're not there yet. Yeah. Because there's some companies like Science, I think they went out of business. They were big on spectrum change. We're just not quite there yet with the formula. I've tried those lights out. With, like with Fluence, it's a white, broad spectrum. It works from start to finish. So yeah. from propagation all the way to flowering, you don't have to change anything. And that's actually better for the plant, especially with LEDs. But I do find with certain cultivars, they just don't like LED lighting. That could be due to the breeding, uh, just the genetics. I mean, yeah. who knows? Well, it's just like some some cultivars perform better under a HPS and some perform better under a CMH. and LED is same thing. Yeah. Blue Dream, I think, does really well under under traditional HPS lights. I didn't know uh, that. Back in the day, yeah, we used to go, it just friggin' flourished. It still does. I mean, it makes sense, you know, because there were no LEDs back then when Blue Dream was out. Totally. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think a couple of my friends have done like CMH versus HPS, and it's funny, like, especially in that spectrum, some stuff does way better under the CMH. 100%. Turp-wise. Yeah. So it's real. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting how far we've come, but still how far the industry really has to go. Oh, man. So far. <laughs> I mean, in 10, 15, 20 years, if it's federally legal, like everything's going to be ran like a food food facility or a medical grade facility, kind of like what you're you know doing mm -hmm. here with the lab. You're running a, like a real laboratory. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, the government's going to get involved of on, a on a federal level, and yep. it's going to change things. I mean, once they learn more, we educate them more. They learn from us. Yeah, because it's like people from the state, you know, they don't they don't know that much. Like we have to kind of educate them as far as what what we need. Yeah, what's well, like FDA, ABC, all these mm -hmm. federal entities. Yeah. You know, or, you know, it's it's really interesting as far as, fuck, it could go in multiple different directions. Definitely. Uh, but I, I hopefully the quality be going up. That's that's one thing I've seen over the last. But th then it plateaus, right? So then it plateaus, and you got a lot of guys that grow rock wool, and I think rock wool's okay. I think there's some people crushing it, yeah. but for the most part, I see a lot of mediocre rock wool, and then cocoa, I see amazing. Absolutely amazing cocoa. So soil, for the most part, the guys who have the balls to grow soil indoors, you know, there's a lot of fucking risk involved. Huge. For one thing, there's a lot, a lot of people of, are scared to do it. Yeah, I think especially if you're already being, you know, you're successful, you've been growing in cocoa forever. Why would you switch to soil? Why would you? I don't blame uh, them. I don't blame anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it's probably the biggest learning curve to make that switch, and it's the hardest media to grow in consistently. In it also has the most buffer though too you can if you recognize what's going on with the plant yeah you know what i mean you have you have a much bigger buffer yes. than you do with rock wool or 100%. with cocoa to where identifying problems you know that could be nutrient related especially you know you're talking about food yeah so bigger buffer but i think just more issues to deal with especially indoors and it's harder to hit certain metrics you know if you're trying to hit yield i think also it's hard for people to get density out of their flower too in yeah. a living soil mm-hmm